Oh, that sounds like blasphemy. Wendy's gonna hurt the children. I want that man arrested immediately. You can't do that, sir. This is America. Sir, this is a Wendy's drive through uh, All I thing you have to fear is for yourself. Our time. The only salvation is to be good. It's my daughter, to be good. In the episode dealing with India, I first introduced the idea that UFOs were being prayed to by the seers and visionaries in the Rig Veda to bring mushrooms, the Soma, for the worshippers to consume as the sacrifice feast. In all the previous episodes, we discovered how all the gods and goddesses of the ancient world are personifications of the four elements, air, fire, earth, and water, and at their core, they all represent the magic mushroom, which requires all four elements to come into the creation. The fire, in case you're wondering, is the lightning and thunder, believed by the ancient people to engender the mushroom growth. We know the earth is involved, and the water as well, and the spores need wind to travel to their newborn locations. The Maruts, I theorize, are wind messengers for the spores, and the Asvins are the UFOs that deliver the mushrooms. Some UFO researchers talk of Vimyana, but that's not a reliable avenue of research in my opinion. This idea can be backed up by actual evidence. Before we get to that, let's look at some of the Rig Veda verses that led me to this conclusion. In these first verses, we hear of the Asvins described as luminous aerial vehicles. My own words, let's see how they match up. A car which assumes many shapes goes to where Soma is pressed. Asvins, your Soma sheds delicious sweetness. Drink ye thereof, and come upon your dwelling. Your car, assuming many a shape, most often goes to the Soma presser's place of meeting. Dweller in floods, king, foremost, he displays his might, set among living things as measurer of days. Distilling oil he flows, fair, billowy, golden-hued, born on a car of light, sharing one home with wealth. The Asvins come from heaven, come from mountains, and come from waters. These are all known characteristics of UFOs. Yea, come at milking time, at early morning, at noon of day, and when the sun is setting, by day, by night, with favor most auspicious. Not only now the drought hath drawn the Asvins, for this place, Asvins, was of old your dwelling. These were your houses. This is your habitation. Come to us from high heaven and from the mountain. Come from the waters bringing food and vigor. May we obtain the Asvin's newest favor and gain their health bestowing happy guidance. Bring riches hither unto us and heroes and all felicity and joy immortals. And men who have trimmed the sacred grass, bringing oblations and prepared, O Asvins, are invoking you. Ascend your car with golden seat, O Asvins, and with reins of gold that reaches even to the sky. Golden is its supporting shaft, and the axle also is of gold, and both the wheels are made of gold. Well, this sounds a lot like the vision of Ezekiel, doesn't it? Now, are we talking about UFOs and cows at the same time, too? Hmm. When yellow stalks give forth the juice as cows from udders pour their milk, and voices sound the song of praise, Asvin's worshippers show first. And we know they're talking about the Amanita muscaria. When purified within the jars, Soma, bright red and golden-hued, hath clothed him with a robe of milk. We call the universal gods and Maruts to the Soma drought, for passing strong are Prisni's sons. Fierce come the Maruts' thundering voice like that of conquerors. When ye go forward to victory, O men, born of the laughing lightning, may the Maruts guide us everywhere. May they be gracious unto us, like some lost animal drive to us bright Pusan, him who bears up heaven, resting on many colored grass. Amrit is in the waters, and the waters there is healing balm. Be swift, ye gods, to give them praise. Within the waters, Soma thus hath told me, dwell all bombs that heal, and Agni, he who blesseth all, the waters hold all medicines. O waters, teem with medicine to keep my body safe from harm, so that I long may see the sun. Whatever sin is found in me, whatever evil I have wrought, if I have lied or falsely sworn, waters remove it from me. I've presented the circumstantial evidence, now I'm going to give you the hard evidence. Official UFO Magazine, April 1976. Six incidents were documented of strange lights seen the night before in the backyards or farm areas, and the next day when investigated, burn circles were found in the ground, and in those circles were growing giant mushrooms. In one case, they were growing in a burn circle in the desert where mushrooms were never known to grow before. We can clearly see here that all the elements are involved, wind, rain, thunder, and lightning. And now we know that these are elemental deities being prayed to. So what other evidence do I have? A book titled Discourses on the Secret Sciences by Abe N. Mount Falcon de Villers, published in 1670. I'm going to just breeze through all the sylph material. Likewise, the sylphs are composed of the purest atoms of the air. 
He expedient of he, he bethought himself, was to advise the sylphs to show themselves in the air to everyone. They did so sumptuously. These beings were seen in the air in human form, sometimes in battle array, marching in good order, halting under arms or encamped beneath magnificent tents, sometimes on wonderfully constructed aerial ships whose flying squadrons roved at the will of the Zephyr. The sylphs seen the populace, the pendants, and even the crowned heads thus alarmed against them, determined to dissipate the bad opinion people had of their innocent fleet by carrying off men from every locality and showing them their beautiful women, their republic, and their manners of government, and then setting them down again on earth in diverse parts of the world. One day, among other instances, it chanced at Lyon that three men and women were seen descending from these aerial ships. Elementals are not from outer space, like aliens, and the UFO is not inhabited or operated. It's a living biological organism that belongs to the Earth like the insects and animals. In 1955, the U.S. Air Force denounced that UFOs were biological animals that lived in the atmosphere and they posed no harm to us. They seem to exist in the subatomic realm, unseen to the naked eye and permeous in the atmosphere. They can be filmed with infrared cameras, though. The question is now, do they abduct people, and if so, for what reason? It's possible, yes, they abduct people since they appear to abduct cows, but we don't see people mutilations, only cattle. There's definitely a relationship between cows, the UFO, and mushrooms. We know that. More than that is speculation unless you want to believe the people who claim they've been abducted. I choose not to for one important reason. The experience seems to be subjective. Jacques Vallée reports cases of all kinds. People have seen men, not aliens, making repairs to ships in the middle of a highway on a dark desert night, creatures with bodies full of hair, weapon technology using blue rays, UFO occupants wearing diver suits, creatures with scaly bodies or only one eye, one that was a frog man, another that had a watermelon for a head, and small dwarfs. Hallucinations can happen just like a dream. If you've ever had a group hallucination on LSD like I have, you would know that for a fact. I had one on Goonie Bird as a teenager and all night three of us had group hallucinations where we all saw and experienced the exact same thing but soon after realized it could not have been real. You would swear upon waking the dream was real and you were there and it really happened. DMT is likely what causes us to dream because the exact same thing happens on DMT as my hallucination that night and how a real dream seems to be. All three of these are related, I believe. It's known by researchers that in the 1200s and in the 1600s, if I recall correctly, large wooden boats were seen floating in the sky and anchors were dropped down and men came down from the anchors and each time there were plenty of witnesses. Why boats and not spaceships? I came up with a theory I coined the Unified Fungal Theory after a meditation on the subject. I awoke at three in the morning to a vision of how it all fits together. Imagine this briefly and see if it resonates with you. The UFO is the higher mind of the mushroom and the mushroom is the physical incarnation of the UFO. The UFO is telepathic. When someone is curious, they might appear, perhaps to test the curiosity. If the person responds positively by following the light, they become entranced. The UFO uses the electromagnetic frequencies to trip the DMT in the brain and then starts to reflect back images that it draws from the imagination set in that person's cultural ideas in order to communicate with the individual. At that point, the person might actually believe they are seeing an alien or talking to one. So I believe the experience is subjective vision, that's all, not a real alien encounter of any kind. This could also explain people who have visions of angels or even Jesus. What are we seeing then in some of these UFO videos and how do we know which ones are real? The amorphous videos are usually real. Orbs and rods are real too and sometimes referred to as fairies. Some UFOs are shaped like long tubes and have been seen entering volcanoes. The hard disk flying saucers are man-made since the 1940s when the Nazis started building them and imported them into the US with the CIA during Operation Paperclip. Most of the videos you see on YouTube are CGI computer generated. Here are a couple real ones. This concludes the presentation titled You Can't Unsee It, Episode 12, UFOs and Elemental Deities. For more information on this subject, visit ancientpsychedelia.com and check out the free online version of the book, Ancient Psychedelia, Alien Gods and Mushroom Goddesses. Thanks for watching. One last thing I should mention, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me in my work, here are several ways you can do that. It does help tremendously and I really appreciate it.